the prophet isn't by himself for any length of time at any point, so there's no way that Cantor could have been controlling him the entire time, and nobody would have noticed with the dreads. I mean, he's like, you know, the prophet. It the people would be all around him all the time. Well, why the fuck did Bruce Willis get beaten up when he tried to talk to the prophet? He like said, "Excuse me, may, may I talk to you about Miles?" You know, Jack Noseworthy, that dude, and he gets the shit kicked out of him. Why? What sense did that make? Nobody can be on the dread side because they're psychopaths. They're religious nuts, and they didn't have to be. It. I mean, the very point that they make, the way we are born is the way we are supposed to be, and yes, exactly, perfect. That is a good counterpoint to the, the whole surrogate thing, but when the people preaching it are, you know, I mean, the the leader is really a surrogate, and the sur the control of that surrogate is a complete psycho who wants to commit, com you know, worldwide fucking genocide. You can't be on their side. You just can't. Anyway, the wife, almost no character whatsoever. The couple of moments that she and Bruce Willis actually do have, kind of do work. You know, the that whole thing about, you know, the car accident and... You know, they lost their kid, she can't accept that, so she has to live through a surrogate. Otherwise, as she said, she, you know, she cannot smile, that is not her anymore. That actually worked, and there's like two, maybe three moments in the entire film where that actually has, that resonates with the audience, and that's almost the only thing in the entire film that does. I mean, even the action, I, you know, I hate T3 hate it. It is not part of the Terminator. In my mind, there are only two Terminator movies, and possibly the show. That's it. T3 had much, much better action, and as much as I hated that movie, I was actually somewhat engaged in the action. In Surrogates, there's just... It is never interesting to watch. It is... There, there's like... There's one bit the, the female agent controlled by Cantor, picks up like a, a metal sign, throws it at Bruce Willis, it goes like right past through the, the car window. That, that was kind of cool. That had me, you know, kind of excited. That was the only thing. The helicopter thing went on for way too long and nobody cared because, I'm sorry, most of the time that fucking helicopter was swinging around in the air. There wasn't even, there, there was one surrogate body left in there that was still alive and it wasn't hooked up to Bruce. Bruce Willis wasn't hooked into it for most of the time. So why should we care? Why should we care about this helicopter? And then suddenly he just hooks back, like, oh, I caught, caught my breath. Back. You know what? Did he know that it was now safer? Did he? I mean, maybe he had some like some monitor he could see where the what the surrogate saw without hooking back in. But we certainly didn't see that. That was not made clear. And then he starts chasing Jack Noseworthy, and right after he gets down, you know, picks up... It, why, why did he look at the fucking stump for ten minutes? Uh, oh, okay. Green blood. Green blood. Hmm, I've got a stump. Okay, I better move on. Why did that... That could have been done, you know, two seconds, move on. Then he picks he picks up the gun, and then Jack knows where he suddenly forgets that he has a gun in his fucking hand that can take out the surrogate and the owner, and just starts, you know, running. I mean, if they had just had a quick little cut of him pointing, and then it fucking clicks or something. I mean, cheap, stupid, really convenient, but it would have actually made sense that he run instead of trying to shoot, and then later, when he suddenly does remember, after all that stupid jumping, Bruce Willis jumping from rooftop to rooftop, saying like he's some fucking vigilante Batman, I don't know. <clears throat> then suddenly Jack realizes, oh, I've got a gun. Tries to fire it, doesn't work. And then Bruce Willis gets, you know, the, the fucking car by the dreads, runs right into him, and there's like clearly, I don't know, three dreads right behind him, running towards him. Cut. And then they're nowhere to be seen, the car, and then he slowly moves towards Jack, and I don't know, 30 seconds later, he finally gets shot by one of the dreads. And I'm sorry, for having, you know, fucking 
robots that can that are nearly indestructible. Also, why why could why the fuck could uh, Bruce just smash that fucker's face with uh, just like that? And why didn't the wife react? I mean, it's just okay. So it's not a real person that he just smashed the face of. It's still he just smashed something right in front of her. I mean, if he had I don't know thrown a throwing some glass against the wall, smashed a plate, punched the wall, would she not react just a little bit? Just, okay, husband, character, person, you're kind of losing it. Distance, need space, kind of freaking me out now. No, nothing, because she's a one-note character, she's entirely defined by, she's, you know, grieving and she's afraid, can't face life. Too bad, she's gonna have to go cold turkey by the end, and the little false tension with the pills that didn't have any kind of, why, why was she suddenly okay with living her own life? There was no kind of, there was nothing to move her to that spot. It would have been so much more interesting if there had been some kind of moment, I don't know, if she should have actually tried to take them and, yeah, yeah, say she, she tried to take them, he runs in, grabs her arm, stops her, no, life is worth living, even with the risk, don't you see? It's some kind of big, dramatic, schmaltzy speech. Yes, go for that. It's, it's, it's that she's just staring out the window, oh, okay, I guess everything's fine then. Anyway, be, uh, robots, why was the face so easy to smash anyway? Anyway, big robots, jump, super strength, why didn't they use that more? She just, she leapfrogs, you know, from car to car and onto the street and nothing comes of it. There's just, there's, you know, it's not that exciting. In T3, there's the bit where the, the TX runs um, in the foresty area with the trees, jumps onto the car, starts, you know, going, um, making our way through the, the fucking roof and attacking them down there. That was exciting. That was, that had the, the jumping thing, that actually sort of used her abilities somewhat excitingly. This, there just was no, the whole car just, the cars banging into each other for no reason. She, she calls up, I found Greer, he just had a car accident, and he just stares, and then a car ra runs into them. Why? It's because it says on the script. Whatever. Oh, and can James Cromwell character, what was with the fucking, first, the gun, why, what is it supposed to prove that he's willing to fire the gun, he didn't shoot Bruce, he didn't, I don't even know where the bullet went because it didn't really show it, he just, he fired the gun, okay, big deal, it's not that difficult to fire a gun, get him in the shoulder, show him you mean business. Just shoot him somewhere that's not gonna really super hurt him, but just to say, I am willing to put a bullet in your body. But no, he just fires it, and that's it. That's supposed to prove that he means business, that he's willing to shoot someone, even though he's not really aiming it. And then, you know, he seems like he's gonna shoot, and then he just uh, slowly puts away the gun, picks up the fucking cyanide capsule in the mouth, and slowly. I'm sorry, no fucking secret agent would have gotten away with that. Okay, you know, okay, Mr. Nazi guy, I'm sorry, can I just have a moment? I just need to pick up a thing. You, you, I'm sorry, you have that fucking thing behind a tooth, something. And how come it, suddenly everybody can just hook into, you know, other people's, um, what the fuck's it called? Uh, surrogates. You know, earlier it was established that you cannot do that with, it's, they're like specifically coded to gen, DNA or something, I don't know. Suddenly he can just... Why does everybody fall for Cantor pretending to be, you know, using the surrogate of that female agent who's so completely unimportant, so devoid of character that I do not even remember her name. You know, um, I'm sorry, I'm your boss, you're... D did you just start working here? I know you didn't because I've seen you work here before. Why are you looking in that folder which is clearly not the... You should go there, find the information that you need over there. What? I'm sorry, and that is the oldest fucking trick in the book. Why does everybody fall for that anyway? Wouldn't it have been much more cool if he had been like, you're not supposed to go there and she had to like...